This regular meeting of October 10th, 2022 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Bradley? Here. Jones? Parks? Here. Prohaska? Here. Ryan? Here. Sancy? Whitman? Here. We're all here. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance with some students from Bryant. Do they want to introduce yep. them? Yep. Okay. Do you want us to face you? Or? No, they can, no, they can face, face you. They can face you. What's your first name? Dane. This is Dane. He's in kindergarten. Joseph Elamagana, third grade. Graham for first grade. Ava Wolf, second grade. Carter Collins, third grade. Amelia Boxlater, second grade. Anna Boxlater, fifth grade. All right. You can stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very nice good. job, you yeah. Very good. It's Great so job. nice to hear that voice. It's so nice to hear that voice. It's such a job, guys. I move the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 12th and the special meeting of September 14th, 2022, as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 12th and the special meeting of September 14th, 2022, as submitted. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. So that brings us to a few board salutes. I have one. Uh, with custodian appreciation day just recently behind us, a board salute goes out to the district custodial staff for their tireless work in keeping our facilities maintained. We often hear how well kept our district buildings are, and that is due in large part to the pride the women and men of our custodial team as they work to ensure the best environment for our students to learn in. So kudos to this team for their outstanding work in this district. I can testify to that as a former teacher. The custodial staff kept our buildings immaculate, and that's one of the things that our district has been very proud of, and they've maintained a great, great custodial staff. So thank you very much to our custodial staff. Great one. Thanks. I have a board salute. This is a board salute that goes to two district students who were recently named to the 2023 National Merit Scholarship semifinalists. Um, Cora Harvey and Haley Lukasek both received the honor, which puts them among the highest scoring entrants in the state of Iowa and one of only 16,000 students nationwide. Congratulations to Cora and Haley on this outstanding honor. Yes. That's great. That is wonderful. Any other board salutes? All right. I move that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We're going to start uh, our visitors forum with um, Megan Richardson from Bryant. Welcome. Hello. I'd like to thank Superintendent Hawkins and the school board for the opportunity to share what is going well at Bryant Elementary School. The first thing I'd like to share is for the first time ever, we have a therapy dog. And our therapy dog's name is Nutmeg. And <laughs> she assists with students who uh, are struggling, especially in the morning. I can't tell you how many times we say, nutmeg's here, and the kids get out of the car, and they are excited to see her. They help out with attendance. Um, some students maybe who aren't getting to school on time, they can't wait 
to get to school to see Nutmeg. Also, we have classes reading to her. She goes to our third grade classes for the whole entire uh, reading time. Kids are reading next to her, and that's going really, really well. Some students are also taking her for a break. She just goes for a little walk for maybe two or three minutes, and that's part of their plan, so they're loving that. Another thing that's going really well for us is the new curriculum of Second Step, and we love just how the whole school is on board with it. Everyone is participating in the meetings. We have announcements on a daily basis. We're back to having all school assemblies, which is <laughs> really cool. Um, but the biggest thing is that we have such a strong common language as a staff. I even see the posters up in our music room, our art room. Our paras are able to utilize that language. So really everyone is immersed in the language of the second step. And just, I know it's a prior, priority initiative of the district, just that building community and having that something that's important. And I feel like we've been able to do that. We did a coin drive where we raised $2,150.39 in just one week for the Dubuque area labor harvest. So all of that money went back into our community. So um, again, HMH, our new reading is going really well. Our students are loving the new pathway, and we really love the, the book choices inside of HMH, and the vocabulary is really, really rich. So again, I just wanted to thank Superintendent Hawkins and the school board for letting me share some absolutely fantastic things that are going on at Bryant. So thank you so much. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. I'm going to meet Nutmeg. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyone else wishing to address the board can do so at this time. We ask that you come up to the podium, state your full name and your connection to the district, and limit your remarks to three minutes. I move that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the items listed in the consent agenda. Is there any item a board member would like to have pulled out? Doesn't look like it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. Which brings us then to the facilities and support services report from Ms. Whitman. Okay, I'd like to highlight on a few things before I um, read the recommendations. We got an update on district projects. Um, senior high school, Ken Straka gave us an update. Phase two project is approximately 62% complete. Um, they're experiencing some shortage due to discounted items, um, things that, you know, an order that they're not able to, shortages, not discontinued items, sorry. They're not able to get on time, so that's a little bit of a delay, but things, they don't expect the delay that would affect any major schedules. Um, Hempstead High School, intercom replacement, parts are still in order. Um, Central Kitchen, rooftop unit is scheduled to be delivered in November. Hempstead High School, freezer replacement, the project is 90% complete and are waiting for the permanent cooler freezer units to arrive. Roosevelt Middle School replacement for the roof um, will be installed June to mid-August of 2023 and the roof will have a 25-year guarantee. The construction will start at the end of the school year um, in mid-August. Eisenhower School Mechanical System Replacement. Um, currently, this project is in the design phase and will be the summer of 2023. Sageville um, Solar Project. Um, construction will start at the end of 2022-2023 with the final completion projected to be September of 2023. We had an update from Amy Hawkins with the middle school consolidation project. Um, there was an informal meeting regarding the middle school study. It was attended by many people on Thursday, September 22nd, and it was conducted by Envision, and they gave a presentation on why the district should move 
from a three to a two middle school model. There was a video, there is a video of this presentation and it will be uploaded to the website very soon. And the community task force is looking at sites as they relate to the land access safety and utilities. The goal is to have a recommendation for a site by November to the school board of this year. Synergistics, we had an update on that. There was an overall decrease in energy usage by 28% resulting in $230,000 um, discount in utility bills from May through September 22nd. Um, district busing, Ernie gave us an update on the district busing, filled us in and all the routes and number of buses and all of that. And one thing he said, the district does still continue to struggle finding bus drivers. And the students, we were glad to hear that were going to Fulton are now going to their other schools. They're getting the service from the city busing services um, for free. And that's really helping those kids. And um, all buses are up and running and things are going well so far. And now I will read our updates, our recommendations. I move the Board of Education approve the donation from Keegan um, Zihiki, Leaky, Zilki? Do you Is it Zilki? Zilki? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Eagle Scout at an estimated value of $1,300 for a Gaga pit ball at the Irving Elementary School. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the donation from Keegan Zilke, Eagle Scout, in the estimated value of $1,300 for a Gaga ball pit for Irving Elementary School. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Roosevelt Middle School roof replacement project and set the date, time, and location as December 12, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. at the Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorization the advertisement for the competitive bids. Second been moved and seconded that the Board of Education tentatively approve the plan specifications, form of contract, and estimate of total cost for the Roosevelt Middle School roof replacement project and set the date, time, and location as, September, as December 12, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. at the Dubuque Community School District, 2300 Cheney Road, Dubuque, Iowa, for a hearing thereon and further authorize the advertisement for competitive bids. Is there any discussion? As I understand it, this uh, the major portion of this roof was the original roof that was on the building. So it's uh, time. Yeah, definitely sounds like that's correct. Yeah. The building's 18 years old. Isn't that the right number? Yeah. Yep. We say it's our new building, but it's 18 yeah. years old. <laughs> yep. Yep. And the next roof is estimated to last 25, 25 years. years. All right. So great. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the submission of the request to the School Budget Review Committee in the amount of $2,730,520 or as determined by the Iowa Department of Education following DE audit review <clears throat> in modified supplemental amount to provide 100% spending authority for 2022 special education deficit funded through the cash reserve levy. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the submission of the request to the School Budget Review Committee in the amount of $2,730,520 or as determined by the Iowa Department of Education following DE audit review in modified supplemental amount to provide 100% spending authority for the 2022 special education deficit funded through a cash reserve levy. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the submission of the request to the School Budget Review Committee in the amount of $529,265 or as determined by the Iowa Department of Education following DE audit review. In modified supplemental amount to provide 100% spending authority for 2022 excess costs 
of the LEP program funded through the cash reserve levy. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the submission of a request to the School Budget Review Committee in the amount of $529,265 or as determined by the Iowa Department of Education following DE audit review in modified supplemental amount to provide 100% spending authority for 2022 excess costs of the LEP program funded through a cash reserve levy. Is there any discussion? Just to point out that LEP means limited English proficiency, so that's a program for our non-English speaking kids. Thanks. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the 2021-2022 Internal Control Policies and Procedures Report. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the 2021-2022 Internal Control Policies and Procedures Report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And the last recommendation I have, I move the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report. Mr. Kelleher, do you have a few things to tell us? A couple things. One or six. <laughs> one, one to six things. Uh, good evening, board members, Superintendent Hawkins. Tonight, I just want to go over a few things in the budget report. Um, first of all, in the area of general fund expenditures, if you look at the report on page 71, you will see that it shows a deficit in the budget balance of $18 million. That is simply because we don't have all the budgets into the system yet. We're still working on those, receiving them from the departments, et cetera. So they haven't been, in, those expenditures have not been entered into the system yet. So that's the reason it's showing a deficit. We will plan and do plan on having those completed by the end of the month. Um, second item is in the management fund. If you look at the remaining budget of 824,000 compared to about 4.9 million total budget, the reason it's down to this amount is because in July we have to pull, pay the full annual amount for our uh, policy insurance policy for liability and property, as well as our work comp insurance, and also the early retirement payments from last year for those individuals who retired. We have to pay that right away in July, so that eats up a good portion of our budget right away. Um, the next one I want to talk about is on the general fund revenue which is on page 76, and we are 25% through the year, and it's only showing about, let's see, 15, 16% total revenue. The reason for that is two things. One is our state aid payments. We receive 10 payments throughout the year, and they don't start until September. So we receive the first one. Now we'll continue to get the rest throughout the rest of the year, but that being short in that first three months, that's why it show a decline in revenue. Second reason is our property taxes. A majority of our property taxes come in in October and in April. So obviously as of September 30th, we haven't received a good portion of our property taxes yet. So that's the reason the revenue is showing at a low percentage compared to us being 25% through the year. I'll say that same thing applies to the management fund and the Pebble Fund. The property tax payments haven't been received, for the, the large piece in October, so we haven't reflected those yet. So those show a lower percentage of revenue compared to the percentage of the year that we're in. And then the final thing is the nutrition fund. Again, the revenue is down quite a bit there for being 25% of the year. Most of that is because our August and September claim for federal reimbursement and state reimbursement hasn't been received yet. School started in August 23rd, right around there, so we filed a claim for August and September. We just haven't received that cash yet. So that revenue hasn't shown up, but once we start receiving that on a regular basis, the revenue percentage should kick back up. Any questions on that? All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. Thank you, Ms. Whitman, for the report. That moves us to the report from Ms. Bradley about Ed programs and policy committee. Thank you, uh, Dr. Parks. We um, 
the Educational Programs and Policy Committee met on November 8th, I'm sorry, on October 4th. Our next meeting will be on November 8th at 4.30 if anyone would like to join us. The first part of our meeting is given to um, Superintendent Hawkins bringing some of her team members to the board committee so that we can learn more about the pro some of the programs that are going on in our district. And it's, it's a wonderful way for us to be able to have to learn a lot about what's happening and to have good conversations about it. So I'm sorry that we, it's hard to transfer that into this meeting and to share with the community and with those who are here uh, uh, the kinds of information that we gain. I'll gather just a few nuggets in each of the areas and share them with you, but know that it's a considerable discussion and it's a very rich learning opportunity for the board about the programs that are going on in our district. The first, and I, I appreciate that Superintendent Hawkins is bringing us uh, at each of our educational program and policy committee meetings, a category from the strategic plan that is highlighted so that we can dig more deeply into that than when we have our quarterly updates from the superintendent. This time it was priority initiative from the strategic plan number two, which is early childhood programming. And so Lisa Tabakhorst, who is the executive director of elementary education, Lynn Glazer, who is the district early childhood coordinator, and Michelle Light, who is the early childhood instructional coach, brought us great information about the statewide voluntary preschool program. When that state program first was uh, given funding at the state level some years ago, this district jumped right in and created a very um, innovative way of doing that. Uh, this district, unlike I believe any other in the state, uh, at that time at the direction of Lynn Devaney, who was our associate superintendent, um, sought to do it as a collaborative venture with the community. So we chose to have one or two preschools in each of our elementaries, and we still have that. And in addition, to bring into the, the statewide voluntary preschool programming for three and four-year-olds and early five-year-olds, as many community partners, uh, community preschools and daycares as we could possibly ha have inter interest in joining us for that kind of programming um, collaboration. And so uh, um, Lynn and Michelle brought us information that we are currently have 41 preschools in the uh, statewide voluntary preschool programming grant and program. It's a outstanding program. Our district has received lots of praise statewide for the innovative model that we continue today. So of the 41 preschools, 29 of them are community preschools who share in the grant programming with us and then our own preschools in our um, 12 elementary schools. It was great to hear that the Dubuque schools, preschools, are up 28 students from last year at this time. And a really significant thing is to, to know that the, the entirety of the statewide voluntary grant program in Dubuque last year at this time was at 701 preschool students. And this year it's at 810, so 109 student increase, which brings us back to the pre-pandemic programming level, which is exactly where we had hoped to be this year. And so we celebrate that return to the number of three and four year olds and early five year olds in our preschool programs that are being served um, this year already at 810. So our goal is to provide quality childcare as well as preschool programs and increase access to the families of Dubuque and the, the regions of the Dubuque Community School District. And so we were delighted to hear about that. Um, I think that the other piece that I would share is the state belief grant. Uh, our district has received that grant, which is going to provide an opportunity for funding, visioning, and planning, and for programming improvements and enhancements in our preschool programs. So we heard more about that at the committee meeting. So happy to, to share that good news as well. Then Joe Maloney, who is our um, district athletics and activities director, brought us an update on the uh, 
uh, summer school programming. We call it the uh, Summer Academy program. It focuses in the morning on reading, in the afternoon on enrichment activities that students uh, who participate get to experience, which is a wonderful ability then to provide full day programming for those who choose to, to attend full day. Invited are first grade, those who have come, children who have completed first grade in the last year and are heading into second grade for this year. And of that, uh, we have 685 students who were eligible to be in the program, and we were happy to know that 210 students took advantage of that program. We have provide transportation on, we call them express routes, where uh, gatherings of kids are picked up on the school bus and returned home later in the day. It's throughout the month of July. So programming was July uh, throughout that time. And good news of the 210 students, which is 31% of those who could attend, 59% of those attended all-day programming. So that's a, a good number of kids going into second grade who have the opportunity to grow and learn not only reading instruction, and we thank Tammy Deer and our elementary language arts coordinator and Lisa Tabakhorst, our director of elementary, for providing top quality programming for our kids who attend that morning programming in the area of reading and language arts. And Mr. Maloney reported to us that, I think this is stunning, 96% of those who attended either improved or maintained their reading proficiency based on an assessment, a statewide assessment, it's called iReady. 96%, that's amazing. And, and you all know that as, as the learning continues in the school year and then we come to that summertime, it's so easy for reading proficiency to really take a dip, which is the problem with that, the model that we still have in most public and most educational programming throughout the country. But this programming for 96% of the kids who attended to maintain or increase their proficiency is just a testimony to the quality of the programming and to the participation that those kids gave to the activities before them. So we celebrate all of that. Uh, thirdly, Julie Lang, our Director of Technology, brought information about the learning management system for grades 6 through 12. It's the technology that allows our teachers to organize and report student um, proficiency levels and student assessment information, not only for their own planning and, and diagnostic use, but also to share with parents and, and with students, certainly. So Julie brought us a uh, renewal for the funding for that for the next seven years. It's called, the program is called Canvas. So those of you who have students in 6 through 12, 12 are, are probably in, uh, recognize that name. So in a moment, I'll bring a motion forward to, um, for the board to approve the funding for the Canvas program. Under the policy section of our time together, we worked with two policies. One, abuse of students by school district employees. That was reviewed and updated. And then uh, the second policy, a radon mitigation policy, is a new policy that's now required throughout the districts in the state. And we thank Mark Fassbinder and Rob Peters for bringing us that uh, radon uh, policy. And I think we have a, a great system in place now for doing regular radon checks in all of our schools and, and other buildings. So those were the uh, policy things that we worked on. We review all policies every five years. So we'll take on others as we go forward, of course. Every meeting we do policies. So I bring a motion before the board. I move that the Board of Education approve the seven-year professional services contract with Canvas infrastructure in the amount of $362,000. $771.78. And as the board knows, that's for a seven-year contract for that. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the seven-year professional services contract with Canvas Infrastructure 
in, sorry, Canvas in structure in the amount of. I said infrastructure. I, it, it just <laughs> infrastructure's on the brain, I guess. Uh, in the amount of $362,771.78. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Bradley, for that report. So we are at new business. I move that the Board of Education adopt the resolution approving the terms of the offer to buy real estate and acceptance and authorize the President and Secretary to execute the offer on behalf of the Board with Court 1 LLC. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the resolution approving the terms of the offer to buy real estate and acceptance and authorize the President and the Secretary to execute the offer on behalf of the Board with Court 1 LLC. Is there any discussion? I'd like to just uh, say that uh, overall my uh, stance and position on this has not changed. I know I'm in the minority, but I want to go on record as uh, not being in favor of uh, selling to court one. I will not give the reasons. I did that at several other meetings. But I do request that uh, the movement, kind of a movement towards finality as this is, that we do this in a uh, roll call vote, please. Any other discussion? All right, roll call vote. Bradley? Aye. Jones? Parks? Aye. Prohaska? Nay. Ryan? Aye. Sancy? Whitman? Aye. That motion carries. I would just comment that the board received information from the court one um, CEO, Mark Dyer, recently saying that they have reached an agreement with the Dubuque Soccer Alliance, which provides continued use for a dollar per year of both the outdoor fields that will remain and the indoor fields that are to be built. So I, I feel very good that that collaboration, as we had hoped it might, might go forward, is indeed going forward. I move that the Board of Education expel student number 808802 from attending school in the Dubuque Community School District through January 17th, 2023. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education expel student number 808802 from attending school in the Dubuque Community School District through January 17th, 2023. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the proclamation for Cybersecurity Awareness, Awareness Month. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the proclamation for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. I always don't remember if we're supposed to vote and then I read it. Does it matter? I'll read it. How about I read it and then we'll vote. Okay, great. Proclamation. Whereas the Dubuque Community School District recognizes that it plays a vital role in identifying, protecting its individuals, and responding to cybersecurity threats that may have significant impact to our individual and collective safety and privacy, and whereas cybersecurity education and awareness is crucial for everyone, including schools, government agencies, the home user, and anyone who connects to the internet with a computer, mobile phone, or other internet connected device. And whereas monitoring and maintaining professional and personal accounts, being conscientious of what you share online, keeping your systems and software up to date, creating strong and unique password, passwords for each of your accounts, recognizing and reporting suspicious messages and using mobile devices and other internet connected devices safely are ways people and organizations can protect themselves from phishing, viruses, ransomware, other types of malware, financial loss, and loss of sensitive data. And whereas maintaining the security of cyberspace is a shared responsibility in which each of us has a critical role to play, an awareness of essential cyber practices will improve the security of Dubuque Community School District's information and infrastructure. And whereas the Dubuque Community School District encourages all individuals to learn about cybersecurity and to put that knowledge into practice in their homes, schools, workplaces, and businesses to stay safe online and connect with confidence. 
Now, therefore, I, Kate Parks, on behalf of the Butte Community School District Board of Education, do hereby proclaim October 2022 as Cybersecurity Awareness Month, signed this 10th day of October 2022. I think I am supposed to say it after we vote, but that's okay. It doesn't. So all those in favor of the proclamation signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion carries. So well, at I least we heard it before we voted. That's right. true. What if you're like, you know what? I, I might change my mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she should read it again. I don't think I should have different passwords for each account. That's too that's complicated. Right. Change your password every yeah. every day. Too hard. Just kidding, Kobe. We will, of course, be very conscientious. If I could just say out loud, too, I mean, a big thank you to Kobe and his team. They've done a really good job of providing education to all of our staff around cybersecurity. As we know, this is a growing concern, and he's put a lot of safeguards in place for our district, which I appreciate, and he's, he's going into buildings and doing a lot of education around this topic with our staff. So thanks, Colby, and to your team for that. I appreciate it. And to remind staff, school board members will never ask you for your password. That's right. <laughs> no, 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 never. <laughs> no, don't want and, there, it. and there were some infringements on security and a very close UEN school district, very close to us. That's right. So, so it's very important that we maintain okay. this program. Yep, that's right. I do have one thing I wanted to mention here is uh, present tonight is our new buildings and grounds uh, manager. I'd like to recognize Rob' presence here. And I'd like to also thank uh, former uh, buildings and grounds manager for putting in all the time and effort into our district. So welcome thank aboard. You, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Any other board member administrative non-agenda items for the night? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned. Very good. Thanks, everyone.